Good morning. Today, I believe sincerely that you will be encouraged uh, by the topic that I'm going to share with you. Uh, this is a topic that has been on my mind for a few years, but I was waiting for the right time. Uh, and I believe that today is the day for me to share this message with you. I'm going to be speaking about the culture of honor in the kingdom of God, the culture of honor. Let's pray before we begin. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the gift of this Sunday morning, uh, the gift of even this gathering. And uh, Lord, I pray uh, that even in these circumstances uh, and situations that we are in personally or as a church, uh, Lord, uh, I pray that we would uh, uh, value the nearness of your presence. We would value the treasure of your word. Uh, we would value your grace and your mercy that abounds over our lives through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you for this time. We especially come at this time into your hands as we hear your word. We pray that we would hear your voice. Illuminate our hearts. Uh, Lord, renew our minds. Help us to be strengthened in our faith and in our resolve to live for you and to bring you great glory and honor every day, every moment of our lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with us to give us revelatory understanding and to empower us to obey, to apply what we learn from you. Thank you, Lord. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The culture of honor, for some of us, it could be that you're hearing this phrase uh, somewhat for the first time. Uh, what does the culture of honor in the kingdom of God mean? And uh, I'm sure that most of us are uh, familiar with the word honor in, in a biblical context. You've come across that word multiple times as you've read the Bible. But today, let's have a, a unified, greater understanding of this very important word called honor. So what is honor? That's a good place to begin. The biblical words often translated as honor can have a number of shades of meaning. And as a baseline definition, to honor means to esteem and treat another with respect because of who they are or what they have done. Honor has the sense of value, price, or quality. That which is valued and esteemed is honored. So the biblical use sometimes also means to seek to enhance the reputation of someone. I find that interesting. So that is what it means to honor from a biblical perspective, a biblical understanding. So as I send the notes this afternoon, I want to encourage you to just glean or go through it again uh, because this is such an important topic and such an important quality in the kingdom of God. So now let us move into understanding whom do we honor? You know, we are now in the beautiful season and blessing of weddings. And as a pastor, when I perform weddings, I regularly follow uh, a good traditional script uh, that has been handed over to me uh, some years back. And in, when we come to the nuptials uh, and during the time of the exchange of the rings, you know, I facilitate the bride and the groom to say to each other, I give you this ring as a symbol of my wow. And with all that I am and with all that I have, I honor you. Now, this language of honor may strike some hearers in today's time as strange. One may think that the Bible tells us to honor only God, right? Are we really supposed to honor our spouse? Uh, would this be some form of a hint of idolatry? Or a second reaction could be that of the idea of honoring someone may sound old-fashioned. Indeed, we rarely hear the word honor today. How many of you would be able to uh, Recollect when was that word last used in, in or among your corporate circles, the word honor? Or uh, when was it used in your conversations with friends or relatives? 
Honor, however, is prominent in scripture. The Bible commands us to honor certain people very clearly. You know, <clears throat> just helping us to understand this morning, I've listed down some very important uh, people or categories of persons or people that the Bible explicitly says that we ought to honor. Most importantly, supremely, we ought to honor our God, our Lord. The book of Revelation chapter 4 verse 11 says, to him, he alone is worthy to receive all glory and all honor. For he created us and by his will, we exist. So supremely above all, we seek to honor God with every breath, every day of our lives. In addition, we are commanded to honor our father and mother. We see that in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 12, in uh, the Ten Commandments. It's clearly listed oh, where we ought to uh, honor our father and mother. We're also commanded in the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 32, we ought to honor the elderly. In fact, this is, the scripture actually says that when we see an elder, elderly person approaching us, we ought to rise up from our chair and greet them. You know, where do we see this happening in today's day and time? It's rare. But let us uh, be keen to obey and honor God as we hear these explicit commands. We are also commanded to honor the rulers. And this is mentioned in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17. I'm not going to read every scripture uh, because of constraint of time, but I request you to go through these scriptures as I send the notes. We're also commanded to uh, honor church leaders. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17, that we ought to honor the elders of the church. We ought to honor the government that God has put in place in his church. We also ought to honor others, our brethren who serve Christ faithfully. We see Paul writing about that in the book of Philippians, in his letter to the church of Philippians in chapter 2, verse 29. He, he commands, he mentions about us honoring those who serve Christ faithfully. Wow. We also ought to honor certain God-ordained institutions, such as the Sabbath day. And, you know, God reminds that again in the, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 58 and verse 13. And then we are commanded to honor the God-ordained sacred institution of marriage, Hebrews 13, verse 4, and also the government. Finally, the Bible describes certain actions uh, as honorable or dishonorable. Uh, abstaining from sexual immorality requires that we control our bodies by the grace of God, by the help of the Holy Spirit, in holiness and honor. And this is commanded in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 and verse 4. Homosexual activity, on the other hand, comes from dishonorable passions, clearly mentioned in Romans chapter 1, verse 26. By now, you and I are getting a sense as we're hearing these explicit commands mentioned in these scriptures and very clear, uh, you know, categories of persons and people and institutions mentioned. We begin to get feel the weight and the importance of this word honor, how important it is to God, how important it is as a quality in his kingdom, that we ought to be an honorable people who honor God and who honor various kinds of people that God has brought in and around our lives and even honor the institutions that we are part of for our well-being. So why is honor so important? Let's take a few minutes to look at that. Why is this quality so important? Why is honor so important? The biblical emphasis on honoring others has everything to do with the biblical command to honor God. That's where it's all connected. That's where it's all wired. Us honoring different people, uh, different institutions, as God has commanded us, is ultimately all connected and wired to our attitude and our desire to honor God. We supremely honor God in, from our hearts, in words, in deeds. But when we honor people, we do it as unto the Lord. We are obeying his command when we honor people. 
So on in the Bible typically has a communal, even public meaning. Now, that's, now this is important, and I need you and me to understand this. In other words, honor is something that is recognized or bestowed by the community. For instance, you would remember the uh, great teacher Gamaliel, who was the teacher or the mentor of the apostle Paul. And uh, uh, the Bible records for us in the book of Acts chapter 5, verse 34, that Gamaliel was held in honor by all the people. Or if you go back a little uh, further, uh, in, in the Old Testament book of Esther, the honor shown to Mordecai, who was Esther, Esther's elder cousin or uncle, was very public, much to his enemy or the Israel, Israelites' enemy, Haman's disgrace. You know, this is recorded in the book of Esther, chapter 6. The book of Proverbs tells us that the wise and the righteous will receive honor. Book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and chapter 11 mention this. But that honor is not fitting for a fool. Chapter 26, verse 1 says. So what we are trying to, um, what I'm trying to share here is that honor is a very community thing. It's a, it's a community coming together to rightfully bestow honor on to whom honor is due. So historians and scholars have long pointed out that one of the cultural dynamics at work in the Mediterranean world of the biblical times was that of honor and shame. Public honor was a highly important cultural value. Public shame, on the other hand, was devastating. We often think of honor and shame as indicative of our West, of our Eastern cultures. You know, here's an uh, interesting um, or an intriguing example that I, I, I came to know of, and that is during an economic downturn in Korea uh, some years ago, many businessmen lost their jobs. Now, instead of telling their families and thus bringing pain and shame on themselves, they still got up every morning dressed for work only to spend the day, walked out of the house and only to spend the day walking the trails of a nearby national park. So we begin to understand how uh, weighty or how important is this attribute of honor that comes from family and community. We cannot overlook the power of honor and shame in many cultures of the world, even today, uh, whether, whether it's today or even ancient. But what do these ancient or our Eastern cultural dynamics have to do with uh, the biblical perspective of honor or with specifically uh, the church in our day and time? And I'm talking about this in the context of why is honor so important? And so stay with me. Firstly, it is important to see that all societies, all communities are a mix of culture, cultural dynamics. That means there are various things that go into forming a culture, you know, the food, the dressing, certain kind of beliefs, certain kind of values. And many societies have uh, put a high weight on the culture of honor and shame. Now, even if it is true that people today in our day and time are influenced more by personal guilt than public shame, this does not mean that the concepts of honor and shame are not important or relevant in our day and time. These attitudes can build or break people, build or break families, build or break churches and communities at large. Honor and shame are very powerful cultural dynamics that we cannot afford to forget. Secondly, more importantly, biblical teaching on honor transcends any particular time, era, or culture. Honoring the Sabbath, for example, will be very clear on that. Honoring uh, the sacred institution of marriage, or honoring our parents, honoring our spouse, honoring our brothers and sisters in Christ, honoring our leaders, honoring the elders, you know, the list that I mentioned, you know, the categories of people and institutions, you know, many of them were established at creation and thus they have enduring significance irrespective of which covenants people lived in the time of the covenants or which chronological period or which era or which uh, generation 
you know it it, it has enduring significant significance so furthermore biblical commands to honor others uh, do regularly go beyond cultural norms so paul tells timothy for example to honor widows you know is that limited to a particular time and age or era or generation of course not or what about honoring uh, the parents you know so when when we look at uh, paul telling timothy as i mentioned to honor widows in a culture that typically did not we see that in first timothy chapter 5 verse 3 you know he was he was asking he was actually commanding telling timothy to go against uh, you know the cultural tide of that day because women were looked down upon or despised but paul tells timothy that it doesn't determine how we live and how we relate to people he says go against the cultural norms of the day and honor widows you know do good to them provide for them especially those who are helpless you know he also exhorts timothy to not let anyone despise his youth in a time and place that honored elders as examples of wisdom and what you see that in first timothy 4:12 you know so young people were looked down upon or women being looked down upon but you know the biblical command transcends or over overpowers those cultural norms so we need to place higher value on the word of god and the commands that god has given us than of the cultural scenario we need to be culture changers if we need to be as disciples of jesus as ambassadors of christ in this world so um uh thirdly in fact the bible commands christians to honor everyone first peter chapter 2 was something you know we are commanded to honor every man woman and child and in fact so beautifully uh paul writes in the book of romans that we ought to outdo one another in showing honor oh so beautiful that we got to outdo one another in showing honor and bestowing honor to all people all human beings are made in god's image and are worthy of honor so the psalmist writes you know god has crowned humanity with glory and honor we see that in the book of psalms uh 8 and verse 5 and so significantly the apostle peter exhorts exhorts us and what a thing he says honor the emperor first peter chapter 2 was 17 at a time when believers were being persecuted uh, because of this uh, ungodly wicked emperor they were being persecuted by the for the for their faith but peter says honor the emperor so we see that uh, peter is exhorting us to honor the emperor <clears throat> in irrespective of what kind of a man he was and so what we understand from uh, this is that honor is not tied to our feelings for someone the biblical emphasis on honoring others has everything to do with the biblical command to honor god god fashioned human beings in his image so when we honor others no matter who they are no matter uh, what they have done or not done but when we honor them we honor god who commanded us to honor them so as we honor god we increase his esteem in the world and attest to his ultimate value now that line is worth repeating i'm going to say it again as we honor god by honoring people we increase his esteem in the world and attest to his ultimate value i now want to come into the part where uh, we uh, try to understand how do we express or communicate this honor to one another and to the people and the institutions that we are part of so here are some practical things that i believe would be helpful you could you could enlarge the list and make us wiser but uh, here are just some very uh, simple but few practical thoughts on how we can express um and communicate honor uh, firstly consider the other better than yourself we see that in the book of philippians chapter 2 where paul commands us to consider so that means we ought to think and we've got to come to a resolution and a decision that we've got to think that the other person 
is better than me. That this person has, has things, has giftings, has qualities that I don't have. And so we, we come to a decision to appreciate them verbally. We acknowledge that verbally. Or we try to recollect and rehearse the good qualities about them and the deeds that they have done. And so that helps us to position our mind in a way that makes it easy for us to communicate, express honor to them. Um, secondly, it is important that we do not be unrighteously biased and prejudiced and judgmental about people. You know, when we are prejudiced and biased about uh, certain kinds of people, certain people groups or culture groups that blocks us um, knowingly, unknowingly from being able to honor them. So we should be, uh, we should ask the Lord to help us uh, become aware if we have any such unrighteous biases and unrighteous prejudices and judgments that we have made about people in our, in, in our minds, in our hearts, that's blocking us from being able to genuinely honor them. Thirdly, um, I encourage all of us to not collect offenses in our journey. We should be able to appropriate God, God's grace to forgive people immediately at the earliest. You know, a forgiven and a forgiving heart, a forgiven and a forgiving heart finds it easier to respond in gratitude and honor. And so keep that in mind that it's very difficult to honor people when we are offended uh, by them or we're carrying an offense in our hearts against them. So do not collect offenses in our journey. Fourthly, be proactive to bless people around you. You know, the Bible encourages us or rather commands us to do good when it's in our power to do so. It commands us to do good, especially to our family and to the family of God, the household of faith. And so be proactive my uh, my brothers and sisters, you know, don't be passive about it. Okay, whenever I can, then I'll do it. No, 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 no. Be proactive to uh, bless people around you in words, in deeds, you know, appreciate good qualities, uh, appreciate their victories, their successes, their blessings, their breakthroughs in God. You know, give gifts, make it tangible, make your honor tangible whenever, wherever possible. You know, communicate that honor uh, in words and in deeds. And so be, and be proactive about it. Don't wait for the day. You don't need a perfect uh, day and time and place to honor. In fact, you would need a, perf a right day and time to correct people. Uh, but, but appreciation and encouragement and honor is always, always welcome. It's always the right time to honor people. Uh, uh, another important thought, uh, you know, as you honor, don't uh, make anyone feel obliged or indebted uh, to you. Freely you have received, freely you should give. That will help you to, you know, keep your honor uh, genuine. You know, you're not honoring people uh, with an agenda. You're honoring people with a selfless heart. You know, you, you know that your reward comes from the Lord. In fact, our reward is the Lord himself and his approval and his endorsement over our hearts and lives. Um, Lastly, you know, I, I want to close by sharing two things. And one is a caution and second is the rewards. Uh, just a caution, just a few thoughts and cautions is that um, even as we seek to honor, you know, let your heart be right before God, the, the content and the posture of your heart, because uh, we should not be uh, involved in any kind of flattery. Do not be a flatterer. Flattery is a trap to manipulate people. It's made up of half-truths or lies worse still. The primary difference between genuine honor, communicating genuine honor and appreciation, and flattery, on the other hand, is that flattery has a selfish motivation. The difference between flattery and a compliment is the benefactor. I repeat, the difference between flattery and a genuine compliment is the benefactor. The flatterer hopes to gain approval or advantage over the one being flattered. So it is wicked, it is evil, and the Bible explicitly states that multiple times in the book of Proverbs. I don't want to talk about it. There, there can be much that we can speak about it, but maybe on another day. But do not be a flatterer. 
be a person who genuinely appreciates and honors people because God sees your heart. Um, also, do not honor to be noticed by men. Don't honor people because you want to make your presence felt. You know, Matthew 23 verse 5, Jesus warned uh, that uh, uh, people us against it. And he said that this was the quality of the Pharisees. Uh, so do not honor to be noticed by men. Do it secretly and do it genuinely and do it as unto the Lord. Also, don't crave for honor. You know, Jesus also mentioned about that in Matthew 23 verse 6 to verse 12. Don't be a person who craves for honor. Don't make your own mouth appreciate yourself. Let an other person's mouth praise you. Don't self-appreciate and self-project yourself. Uh, you look like a fool uh, when we do that. Uh, so don't do that. Let an other person's mouth uh, praise you. Lastly, but not the least, uh, the rewards of honor. Yes, there are rewards. Of course, God uh, himself is our exceedingly great reward and him saying well done to us what a reward it would be but God also uh, you know makes his rewards tangible and his rewards are to bless us and to build us up and to help us fulfill his purpose for our lives so you know, when we are an honorable honoring people you know we experience the favor of God in the grace of God but I believe that he gives greater honor to those who humble themselves you know when we honor others we humble ourselves we make ourselves lesser. And the Bible explicitly says that, you know, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God because he gives grace to the humble and he gives greater grace. So the favor of God, the grace of God, I believe tangibly increases over our lives as we make ourselves lesser before God and we exalt others, we honor others. You know, we genuinely seek to lift up other people. Also, you know, there's blessings. Uh, for example, when we honor our parents, Exodus 20 specifically says that we receive long life and we shall have good success. And that's important. Also, when we are an honorable honoring people, you know, our extrinsic value, not our intrinsic, not our intrinsic, but our extrinsic value uh, will increase and we will be a blessing to people. And, you know, we unknowingly uh, create a zone of success for ourselves because, you know, what we sow, we reap. When you honor, you will be honored. That's not why we do it, but that's basically how uh, God's kingdom uh, works and functions. Lastly, divine opportunities uh, to move further ahead in the purpose of God, they come our way. You know, when we are an honorable people, when we honor others, we, we you know, God just opened amazing doors uh, because the posture of our heart is right before him. So be encouraged, my brothers and sisters, you know, uh, uh, the lot of scriptures that I have mentioned or quoted, there's just a lot of references that I've given, but more importantly, there are some very important truths that have been contained in, in today's message. And I really pray that you and me would be, um, and, and, and Utsav as a community would be uh, an honorable community, honoring God above all, supremely honoring God, honoring our parents, honoring our el the elderly, honoring uh, you know, our leaders, uh, honoring one another, uh, honoring everyone, honoring the sacred institutions that God has put in place, honoring the Sabbath day. I want to encourage you, don't make it a habit to keep missing Sunday service. Just because it's online, that doesn't mean that God is not watching. You know, it's important to stay connected and we need to be proactive about it. Don't be careless about the Sabbath day. Don't be careless about uh, coming together. You know, don't take it lightly, beloved, because we are accountable to God for it. And so, you know, honor the institution of uh, the Sabbath day, honor uh, the institution of the church, you know, don't forsake and take lightly the gathering of the church, honor the institution of marriage and of family. And so when we do that, you know, an honorable and an honoring people uh, will be positioned and postured in a place where we will continuously press on to fulfilling God's purposes for our lives. So be blessed, have a blessed uh, Sunday with your families and your loved ones. We will keep you informed about the developments in the coming days, uh, weeks, and the months ahead as to what we're planning about the gatherings. We'll keep you posted. We won't leave you wondering. The Lord bless you and your precious family in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm.